Now, more now from the controversial book written by Harry and Meghan's biographer. Omid Scobie claims that King Charles was in tears because he was worried about Prince Andrew's mental health following the Jeffrey Epstein scandal. Scobie also says it was Prince William, more than any of the other senior royals, who wanted Andrew to be marginalised. The author claims William is colder than his father. Well, I'm joined now by the former BBC Royal correspondent, the resplendent Jenny Bond. Jenny, it's always a fantastic pleasure to see you. So this book, Endgame by Scobie, is causing endless problems to the royals, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's already been described as a bombshell with all sorts of explosive allegations. Um, I really don't think it is. Haven't actually read anything that surprised me at all so far. Uh, you talk about Charles being allegedly in tears over Andrew's mental health. Well, um, Charles is a softie. He, he's always been a very sentimental sort of guy, and Andrew is his little brother. And I, I don't think that uh, Charles is without feelings, but... Uh, how much he uh, really broke down in tears, I think, is unlikely to, to be true. I think probably that's exaggerated. I mean, you know, Charles had his 75th birthday party um, last week at Clarence House, and although we don't have confirmation of exactly who was there, there is no indication whatsoever that Andrew was invited uh, amongst this small group of relatives who were there. So I'm not quite sure how close they are. So basically, haven't seen much in this book that surprises me. And the thing about this um, book, Jenny, of course, Scobie is the Sussex's lead cheerleader anyhow. So how much of this do you think is true and how much of it do you think needs a substantial pinch of sodium chloride? <laughs> well, Omid is very, very hot on the fact that he, this is not, he says, I'm not Meg's pal. Uh, this isn't to do with Harry and Meghan. Their story is only a small part of this book, which is curiously called Endgame. I mean, I don't know if in it, because we haven't seen the full book yet, is he predicting the end of the monarchy? I'm not quite sure. I mean, we learned that, that Meghan uh, was unhappy in the UK and has no intention of setting foot in the UK again, apparently. Uh, that's not really a surprise. That she didn't come to the coronation, not only because uh, it was Archie's fourth birthday, but uh, because she didn't want to step back into what she regards as the soap opera um, of the royal family. Well, I think Harry and Meghan have got their own soap opera going on, actually, to be truthful. Um, so I don't see the bombshells in this, but it's routinely being described as such for publicity purposes, I'm sure. And Jenny, the revelation that William is colder than his father won't help. I mean, he's always been very open about his feelings. He's done a lot of work with mental health charity, for example. Yeah, the William I have known um, is not cold, but he's tough. And he's stubborn. And I think he's had to be tough um, and very focused now, being alone, without his brother to support him, without his wingman. Um, and I think probably he is the tough one of that generation of royals. But that's how, that's how he's got to be. And I don't think it's any bad thing. And do you think there'll be anything left in this book? I mean, it seems most of it's been leaked to the press before it's even out. <laughs> it was ever thus, wasn't it? Um, look, I, I don't want to diss Omid. He's a, he's a journalist, he's a royal reporter, uh, and maybe he does have great contacts, but he's quoted as writing that a close friend of Catherine, of Kate, um, had uh, had told him uh, that Catherine had been, hadn't got on with Meghan. I mean, look, a close friend of Catherine was never, ever going to speak to Omid Scobie. 